From the Hill Country in Texas, broadcasting worldwide, this is OneRadioNetwork.com. You think after all these years, I'd know what I was doing, but you know, it's Monday. It is September 11, 2023. We won't even talk about what happened 22 years ago today because, well, we won't. It's all a lie. Because it's all a lie. On the show, we talk about cosmology truthing. We're going to talk about a uh, a, uh, um, a documentary that I'm considering producing. So I'm going to use uh, Dave Wise, Flat Earth Dave, to answer some critical questions to decide how to do this. Because I can get the money. I can raise the money. I'm going to do it. Anyway, so 888-663-6386. Email Patrick. OneRadioNetwork.com, as I said, September 11th. It's about noon central time. We're going to go to the four corners of uh, Flat Earth and talk with Dave Wise, who, who is here, Flat Earth Dave. Good morning, sir. It's been so long since we talked to you. How you been? How you been? I'm doing great, Patrick. You know, still, uh, the world is still a stage, a complete and total stage. I know. It's like I was talking to a... Uh, uh, my last guest, Dave, and you know how, you know, the whole CGI thing with NASA and, oh boy. you know, and, OMS and all that stuff. Now people are starting to use it to their advantage, where when you show them something that actually is real, you know, like Building 7 being blown up or something, now they're saying, well, you know, that that was just, that wasn't really real. That was just, they just doctored the, the film. Interesting. Yeah, the whole AI thing. You don't know what's real anymore. We've been saying yeah. it for years. They're going to blur the lines. You know, we catch all the fakery in space on the ISS, the moon landing and stuff. Um, the But they're getting better at it slowly. And soon we won't be able to tell the difference. I mean, if you watch the movie Gravity, there's yes. very little I- anomalies there. On the space station, which is supposed to be real, there's so many errors. Okay? Like, why is the real thing fake and the fake thing look real that's what elon musk said right if it looks fake well then it's probably real oh There's my something. god if, it, if you can tell it's real because it looks so fake is what he said when he was referring to his car in space oh. and um that, that's just another, <laughs> another thing elon musk our lord and savior no elon musk the puppet for the elite he's the puppet that they put out in front of us we go oh my god elon he's so rich he's so cool right he smoked pot on Joe Rogan's show, but in reality, he's just a puppet for the puppet masters. Mm. <laughs> I don't know how you feel about it. But... No, I, I, yeah, yeah, I don't trust. But listen, anybody that tells me they're shooting up rockets to to do satellites when we know they're just helium balloons, I mean, how can you trust that? I mean, yeah. come on. I mean, when, when we look at his rocket launches, they're provably fake. They're not just me saying they're fake. They're like, okay, that's not real. And then you're like, okay, well, if he's faking a rocket launch, what else is he faking? Everything else. NASA's faking everything, right? But he, you know what? Here's something I want to discuss with you and, and uh, tell me what you think. So okay. there's a big push for satellite phones, right? Everyone, to get, when the power grid goes down, you need satellite phones, right? So how does a satellite phone work? You make your call on a power, high-powered phone that can reach, instead of a cell tower, it can reach a satellite. And then the satellite relays it to another satellite. And it's a pretty cool, right? Pretty cool, right? So if you think about it, though, um, if you think about, you know, if you can make my screen so people can see, this is our solar system. This is our solar system. We're corkscrewing through space, changing speeds, changing directions. We're spinning at 1,000 miles an hour at the equator, but only 300 miles an hour in closer to the pole, like in Australia or Norway, right? And we're 66,000 miles an hour in a curved elliptical orbit around the sun, right? Speeding up and slowing down, speeding up and slowing down, and chasing the sun at half a million miles per hour. Somehow, we have satellites thousands of miles up, hundreds of miles up, thousands of miles up, whatever they are, that are perfectly staying over the same piece of land the whole time while they're corkscrewing, okay? (laughs) Somehow, they can have a geostationary satellite that is staying over you know the earth while it's spinning and twirling and whirling you couldn't even do the calculation in theory to make that work let alone make it work in reality right the other thing is remember the red bull jump 
You can, you can come back no. now. Remember the Red Bull jump? No, I don't know that. What you're talking about? So, so the re- the Red Bull jump. Um, let me find it. It was a it was a it was a uh, parachuting jump from space, supposedly. Okay, and um, it was this guy Felix Baumgart- Baumgartner, whatever his name is, and uh, he went up in this capsule up to 127,000 feet. Right. Interesting though, yeah. when he opened the door, getting in, and when he jumped the horizon was at the same level from 10 feet off the ground to 127,000 feet. The horizon didn't drop. That's a problem, but that's not why I'm telling you about this. Um, he, um, where to go? Red Bull. That's a problem. Um, he, he jumped Wait a minute. Hold on. So this is the famous picture that they showed. Look, you can see the curve of the earth. But when we looked at all the land features, all of this land is New Mexico, right? I didn't know New Mexico covered a majority of the earth, but that's not the reason I'm telling you this. Okay. 127,000 feet. The, 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 the base in New Mexico that was communicating with him practically lost communications because they was too far. 127,000 feet. That's like 20 miles, right? They lost, Mm -hmm. they, they couldn't communicate with him radio wise. How's your little cell phone, your little satellite phone, going to connect with a satellite that's whizzing through space. So what are they connecting with? Because satellite phones do work in um, some remote areas. Sometimes they don't, but a lot of times they do, and there's no cell towers around. And here's, I I think it's, I don't want to call it a theory because I think it's an actual fact. What, what, so we know that there's balloons, you know, tens of thousands of them up there with satellites hanging and them floating in our atmosphere. But what else is up there that has its own power source, has radio transmission, batteries, energy, and is all over the place? Airplanes. They're everywhere. Okay. And airplanes pick up internet, right? You're on a plane. You can use the internet on, a, on an airplane. So what about we're just, these satellite phones are just connecting to a mesh network of moving towers, which are jets jetliners okay and sometimes in the southern oceans you know or or someplace where it doesn't work well there's no airplanes there right what's the first thing that they did when we started the ukraine war they said elon musk said oh i'm turning off the the um starlink in ukraine you know why because they made a no-flight rule over ukraine okay there's no airplanes so he had to say oh i had to turn it off right? What's more logical that we're connecting to these random satellites that are somehow mimicking the, you know, their positions and, you know, they're mimicking all the motions of the earth or we're connecting to airplanes where we know exactly where everyone is and where everyone's going to be. And computers could say, okay, time to switch from this plane to that plane. Cause that plane's coming into your area, you know, and then after four minutes, it's going to switch to that plane. And it's just, it's just like a, like when you're driving on a long trip, I, I was on the phone from, you know, Southern New Jersey, all the way to Connecticut, never lost a call once. How many tower jumps did I do? You know, 20, 30, 50, hundred without a single no. interruption. Airplanes would be even easier because there's nothing in your way. So that's how satellite phones tell- work. And it's all a scam, all a scam. <laughs> okay. So you said something a few minutes ago, which I never really thought of. So NASA claims that uh, the Earth is we're spinning around the sun at, what, 66,000 miles an hour, right? Speeding up and, and then, going down, yeah. And, Average up 66. As, and then the solar system is also doing the Milky Way thing. What's that about? So that's – I didn't even mention that. So, the well, the solar system, the, the sun is going almost a half a million miles per hour. So it's flying <laughs> around the, the great attractor, the center of our solar system, or our galaxy, I mean. Yeah. Right. And uh, yeah. and we're orbiting 66,000 miles around an elliptical orbit. We're spinning at the same time. Right. Somehow all of this works like clockwork. It's amazing. And gotcha. uh, and then the entire. Galaxy is going like 2.2 million miles per hour in a fourth direction. Oh, and, good. Uh, and somehow all of these satellites that are falling around the Earth. Are staying in their perfect position. That's what I never thought about before this morning. How could these satellites, I mean, how does NASA explain that? This this Earth supposedly is doing all these gyrations, cabillions, and then these satellites are 
just hanging with the earth? I mean, how do they explain that? Or, or they don't? They, they, well, they, they have this amazing satellite tracking system, right? Which is yeah. absolute, it's absolute insanity. Here's how satellites work, right? So you have, you, you have a person that's on a, on a phone right here. And right. this first tower sends out a signal and it says, okay, I know that the, this person is, let's say this is two miles, whatever. So he's somewhere two miles from the tower. So that person is somewhere on this circle, right? Another tower sends out a signal and says, well, I know that that person's somewhere on this circle. Well, if he's on this circle and that circle at the same time, well, then that, that narrows it down to he's somewhere, he's somewhere out here, right? And then a the third signal <clears throat> would go and lock in their position. Right, because the, kid, the only place that's common for all three is this point right here, and that's how it knows. These are stationary towers on Earth. That's how GPS works on Earth. Now, you can have it with airplanes doing it in balloons because you know exactly where they are and supercomputers can just calculate it, but having a, a satellite falling around the Earth, matching all of those crazy directions with its own, like what does it have a solar panel on it? You know, like how's that work? Right. Tell me tell, no. you know, how's that transmitting? You know, I know how, how solar panels work. If you had a solar panel that was a thousand times stronger than the strongest solar panel. It still wouldn't be enough power um, in space to, to do what it's claimed to do. Right. And then how, how, how the solar power needs to be grounded. How do you ground something in space? Okay. There's, there's so many issues. It's uh, it's <laughs> absolute insanity, absolute insanity. So tell me this. So I got a little, Android, some dumb phone that I, yep. that I use. How does this thing work? Say I call you wherever you are today. How does, does it go to t towers? How it, goes, does it, it goes to the closest tower and that tower puts okay. it all through cables. And if you're it calling, if you're calling across seas, it goes through underwater cables, uh -huh. right? Right. Under, undersea cables. Here's a, here's the, the map of all the undersea cables, right? This is a, um, a, a spread out map. But if you took this map, and turned it into a flat earth map, which means you take it and you have to kind of wrap it around. So you have your north here and you wrap it around. None of these lines would break, right? But if you had one going from Australia to Santiago, which on a globe would be very close, it would break. It would break if you, if you turn it into a flat earth map. The reason, you know, the cable that goes from, from here, it goes all the way up, you know, all the way over and then all the way down. Right, because that's a straight line on a flat Earth map. It's crazy. Gotcha. If you have a question for Dave, and I'm sure you can have some, you can call triple eight six six three sixty three eighty six. Email Patrick at one radio network dot com. So, as you know, uh, you may know, I'm a screenwriter, written three, four in the works, and I want to produce a a a really kick ass, high end, expensive theater ready documentary to once and for all prove whether the earth is a globe or a, um, or a plane, right? Or an immovable plane. And so I saw the Eric Dubay <clears throat> a video, which you've seen, and I thought, man, how come nobody has done that? So can you show us a flat earth map, the, the current one or the one you use? What is it called? The Gleason's map? Because I have some questions for you. Okay. Can you show me one? Sure. How about that? Oh, okay. So what's the question? So what what is the exact center there, the white part? That's is the North that Pole. The North? Yeah. Okay. It's the North Pole. And where is the United States on this map? I just hold on, I'll make, I'll, I'll make it bigger for you. You make um, a bear. You're such a geek. That's great. Okay. Dave Weiss so, is with it. So, oh, there. So, so there's, there's, the, there's the center right there with that black, where the black rock is, the Rupus Nigra, black rock, mm, center. It's all black rock. I mean, come on. Really? Yeah. And uh, so here's the United States. <laughs> okay. Mexico, uh -huh. South America, right? Okay. All right. So let's say that uh, when I, to do this documentary, I'm going to get a a jet. I'm going to charter a jet. I'll probably get John Travolta to, to fly it. Okay. So, so say we're, uh, we're right in the center in St. Louis. Okay. So point 
You go where St. Louis. It's right, right in the center of the United States, right? right yeah. So yeah. Right, right, right here. Right there, yeah. So all of a sudden, I start flying due west, or the pilot starts flying, I'm sorry, due east. <clears> just <throat> due east. And he flies in a straight line. How's he going to make a straight line, though? What's he going to yeah. use to make sure he's going straight? Is there, there's got to be a way to do that, right? There, there is, computers? but nobody, nobody does it. It's like GPS won't tell you if you're going straight. You won't be able to steer straight because you really don't know if you're turning. You need something to, you know, you do a little micro turn. You're going to go in a circle before you know it. Okay. You don't know if you're going straight, right? And a compass will only let you go straight. See, these lines from the center, all of these straight lines, those are north and south. Now, if you go magnetically south, that is a straight line. Magnetically north is a straight line, right? Because you got your, you got your magnetic north here. So the compass okay. will point towards the north. And if you go south, that's straight south. Oh, People don't realize that, that be- south is every direction away from the center is south. That would be a way that you could go in a straight line by going magnetically south, David? Right. Magnetically south. Now, if you go magnetically south on a flat Earth or a globe Earth, you end up in, in Antarctica every time. I think what you're talking about is Eric said, um, but tell, tell, me, tell me what he said, because I kind of, I kind of forget. What, what he said was that if you took a plane and you flew in a straight line, that if you flew for 48 uh, let's see, 48 hours at 500 miles an hour, you would come back to the same spot if you were on a globe. You would just go around the globe, right? Correct. So, but, which you taught us, and we know that if you did that, hold on a second, you would go to Antarctica because it's always south, right? Right, but first, first thing you have to understand is what east and west are. So here's America okay. right here. Okay, ignore the... the the see-through part because it's green um and so you think that west is this way right west is this way but you have to keep turning to the north right you have to stay equidistant from the center so if i start going west i have to follow this circle if i'm if i'm going west on this line this line is west because think about it north is over there and then west is 90 degrees to north so if I started going that way, I'm no longer going west. I'm going south. West is a circle on a globe Earth and a flat Earth. It's a circle. So when I leave California, I have to constantly adjust to the right to maintain a heading of west, and it'll take me right back to where I'm going. That's not what Eric is talking about. I'm going to get to that. If I want to go east from New York, I have to constantly turn left. This is the same on a globe Earth and a flat Earth. Many globe Earths are like, no one's turning left. You don't even understand. They don't even understand. You have to do that on a globe. Okay. Here's where the discrepancy comes in. And then I'll get to Eric's point. On okay. the equator, on a ball, you wouldn't have to turn at all. It would just take you what's called in a great circle, the full circumference of the earth. So the problem is, if you go straight, I contend that you'll have to correct to the north when you're going west and correct to the south going, I correct to the north, correct to the to the Correct to the well, you still have to correct to the north both ways. You have to correct to the left or correct to the right. So here's the problem. On a globe, when you go south of the equator to maintain a heading of west, you have to now correct to the left, to south. Okay? Because on a globe, those circles are going are, are going the other way. They're going around, right? But we know we already have testimony from ships captains that say they always have to correct to the north, right? They think that their rudders on their ships are wrong. And like, why do we have to always correct? Something must be off because they don't understand that they have to correct. Um, but so that, that's one proof right there. But the, the flight thing is the easiest thing to prove, right? Because if you go west, right, right? If you go west and don't turn, you're heading south because boom, Antarctica, right? You with me? I don't want to lose you. So straight line west, right? Straight line I mean, south, straight line, no matter where you go, no matter where you start, start from here, go this way. It's south, 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 south. Every straight line is south. I've been saying this for years, right? But here's what we do. 
You know what? You know how airplanes stay level with their gyro, right? Do you know about this? I can tell you. Kind of, sort of. So airplanes, when they're on the runway, they spin up their gyro, and their gyro is on a three gimbal, so it can rotate in any direction. And it spins, wow. and it holds rigidity. It says, okay, this is level. So when the airplane turns, it knows it's turning because the gyro stays level. It turns. When it goes up or down, it knows because the gyro stays rigid in space. It doesn't, it isn't affected by gravity or anything, right? So the problem is, what happens when you dive over the Earth? How come... The gyro would have you sideways when you're halfway over the earth. And uh, that's a big problem. And um, they say, well, there's a, there's a box, a special box that, that adjusts for that. Not nonsense. But now getting to Eric's point, if we get a yeah. vertical gyro, a gyro and spin it up <clears throat> when we're heading, so you're in flight or on the ground, doesn't matter. And you spin it up. So it's aligned with East and West. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so now you're flying and you just look at the gyro and you say, I'm going to follow this West on the gyro, which is, west. Right? right. And then as you go West, the real magnetic West will peel off to the right and you'll be heading South. But you'll keep going straight. And that's it. That's all you need is a, a you get a, a big airplane so you can bring some college professors on there, some science, real scientists, not Neil deGrasse Tyson or any of those guys, you know, bring politicians, whoever, and, you know, bring school teachers, bring um, anybody, right? You, and news crews, and you film this live and you show yeah. that the gyro will hold rigidity going north and south, right? So it will hold rigidity going east and west, but the direction will peel off. The magnetic direction will peel off when you're going east and west. There is no other explanation other than the earth is flat when you do that. It's literally a one day test. But you have to do it in one the southern day. hemisphere. One day. You can do this all in one day. You need an airplane. You need a couple hundred dollars worth of equipment. You need a film crew. You need, you know, the people on there to document it properly. And um, and uh, so, I would, but you're gonna, I would, go ahead. Can you hear me? You're going to end up in Antarctica. If you keep going, yeah, but that's a long ways away. <laughs> you're not going to. You don't even need to go. Like, if you did it, if you did it right here in uh in South America, let's say we do it down here, like Brazil, you wouldn't even have to go all the way across Brazil. Just go 100 miles, 200 miles. And uh, you would see that north will peel off. I mean, west will peel off to the north. But I think for, for drama, you didn't want to end up in Antarctica. Well, you won't end up in Antarctica. You'd be shot down before you got there. Well, well it'd be a, great, be a great documentary if you're shot down. It would be. <laughs> okay. Or... So or or the news, you know, you, you wouldn't be recovered. The news would go, some crazy flat earthers are trying to prove that the earth is flat and cost us millions of dollars in rescue efforts as they, efforts as they crashed in the Southern Ocean. Uh, 20, you know, 12 souls were lost. And, you know, and the, that's what the mainstream media will do. And that'll be in every paper, every, every mainstream media across the world um, saying the stupid flat earthers, you know, costing taxpayers millions of dollars with their stupid tests. But they will never show the results. Earth Flat Earth Day, join us if you'd like, email or call. You know, the way I would like to approach it, it doesn't matter because this is all down the road, but I would do it from a neutral position that I'm just, I just want to prove what it is. It's a globe, it's a globe. Yeah, you know, and then you, like you say, you could actually get scientists on, you know, globalists and flat earthers on there to talk about it. And you could film this while the plane is flying and you could get people to understand what exactly you were doing. I know how to do it. Easy. Yeah, yeah, you could do it. Yeah, Easy. you could do it. But how how far would it take? Can you just give me a guesstimate how far you'd have to fly if you want to go all the way to the Arctic? Oh, it depends, it depends on where you are. You know, I mean, where, where are you taking off from? We take off from Santiago. What is it, a thousand miles or something like that? Um, oh, no, that's okay. Yeah, but that, that, so you, you got to get, get everybody down to Santiago. You ever, you ever try to go to Santiago? It's all right, you know. Big, big time movie producer like me, I can figure Here, it out. Here's the so, problem, Patrick. In in reality, you're not going to get permission. They're not going to give you permission, right? You need permission. You need to file a flight plan. They will not, you know, uh, on, on my app, the Flat Earth Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock app, there's a Antarctica button right here, okay? You click that Antarctica button. There's all the videos that YouTube is hiding from you, and there's one of them called Sorry, Antarctica is Closed. And one of our lawyer <laughs> uh, researchers um, 
he uh, he put a 35 minute documentary together showing you what hoops that you'd have to jump through to get permission to go to Antarctica. It'll cost you a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand dollars in permits. It'll take you a couple of years, and then they'll turn mm -hmm. you down and keep the money, and you won't, and you won't, let, they won't let you go. They got this thing so locked up. Yeah, just going to Antarctica. There, wow. there, and people say, well, there's a hundred companies that you can go. Yeah, you can pay, you know, 15, 20, 30, 50 thousand dollars to go for three days. They take you from Santiago to the little peninsula over here, which is bigger than many countries. And they take you to either Deception Island or Rothschild Island. Isn't that weird? And uh, mm -hmm. they show you some penguins and some ice, and then they kick you out. There's no independent uh, exploration south, actual south. Yeah, you can go to the base over here, right? You, you can do a couple things, but they won't let you independently explore um, Antarctica. What happens if you would just be a rogue and, and hire some pilot and pay him a bunch of money and just do it without a flight plan? What, what happens then? <clears throat> Somebody tried that. They, they did a show on it, and they were intercepted by two fighter jets. Um, some fishermen tried it. They were just trying to go fishing, and a, a, a warship came after them. And, uh, you know, radioed them that they need to turn around immediately. And then there's another guy that, an explorer, I forget his name off the top of my head. He got permission from his country a couple times. And each time he went, he was stopped and arrested and put in jail and um, all sorts of stuff. But they will not let you independently explore. Think about this. You, you know, you know that if we had access to Antarctica, it would expose, expose the globe lie. Right, Patrick? Of right? course, yeah. Okay, so so you know that, all right? We know that. We just need to prove it to everybody else. So the elite know that the globe lie is the thing that keeps them in power because if people found out that we lived, you know, we're at the center of creation, that there's probably more land, that uh, we're way more power powerful than they want us to know, that there's no overpopulation, there's no um, shortages of anything, especially food, that electricity is free if they allow us to have that Tesla technology. Um, they, that's how they stay in power. The globe lie keeps us uh, spinning out of control, lost in space. So they also know that if we had access to Antarctica, it would expose the whole thing. So let's say we set this thing up and we're going to go and we're going to prove it. You think they're going to go, damn it, those Patrick and Dave got us. They've exposed the whole thing. Right? They, damn, Jesus. damn, right? Damn. I, I, no, they yeah, would, they I, would, they would disappear our plane, disappear our boat, and they, they'd say some crazy idiots tried to go into very dangerous waters. They'd write a whole freaking story about it. And the whole world would be going, those stupid flat earthers, those dummies, those dummies, right? And that's how it, that's how it goes. And then people just believe the propaganda. So we need, to, we need to wake people up to the fact that we're living on a lie, right? And the reason I'm showing you this, these are the bases. I don't even know if they're all real. I know like this one off of Australia is where these two are real, I think. Um, this one's real. Maybe these other ones are, who knows? But they're just along the shoreline. Big deal. So what? Okay? They're just along the shoreline. These are the bases. Nobody goes from this base across the bottom and shows up at this base ever. No one ever does that. Okay? Maybe. So maybe. Is that line where the water starts or is that where the ice wall is? The red, the red, uh, the red line, I think that's 60 degrees south. Uh, that's the no fly zone, right? Okay. That's like a thousand miles. Okay? Or, or it, it, I mean, it, I'm not, I'm not exactly, I mean, it starts right around there, right? So you're not allowed to go beyond 60 degrees south. And what, what's down there at 60 degrees south if we just flew down there? What would you see? You'd see water. <laughs> You'd see nothing. Well, but can that be proof, though, that it's flat? Because you wouldn't see water on a, on a globe. Yeah, you would. You would. Yeah, you would. On a globe, it's just ocean. It's just open southern ocean, unexplored, <laughs> uh, unexplored southern ocean. Um, but would you come back to where you started on a globe? What do you mean? If you're going south? Yeah, you, you talk about around. The, yeah, you talk about the straight line. Well, they're not going to let you fly over Antarctica. And every straight line will take you over Antarctica because the Earth is flat. They're not going to let you fly south of 60 degrees. It's crazy. 60 degrees. 60 degrees yeah, south. So, degree. so, so the equator yeah. is 90. The North Pole is zero north, and the legend South Pole is zero south. Okay, so you start at the equator, you know, um, 
I mean, well, the quate, the quate, well, it depends on how you look at it. And so that's how, that's how, you know, it's 180 degrees from the North Pole to the South Pole. So they don't let you go farther than 60 degrees south. Who is they? They are the people that, that are, you know, pulling our strengths up. The, the hmm. Council of Formulations, the United Nations, the Bilderberg Group, the World Economic Forum, hmm. you know, all of those unelected um, corporations that are running the world. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, yeah. But you're so right. Well, but I'm sure you've thought about this. So there's got to be another word, another way to prove, absolutely prove that we're not on a spinning globe, right? Well, we, we, we actually have proved, proved it already a hundred times over. Yeah. It's just getting people, it. getting people to listen. You know, for example, yeah. for example, um, you know, this, uh, this observation here, hold on. So this is from a mountaintop where we're looking south and I'm not looking south. We're just looking, the air is clear and using the globe earth calculator, neither we can see, uh, eight mountains. Okay. They're all there, the right shape. We can see almost all of the mountain, the tops of these mountains should be over 40 miles below the physical curve, but we can still see them. You know what mainstream science says about this? What do they say? Nothing. They won't even look at it. No. If you ignore it and pretend it doesn't exist, then in your world, it doesn't exist. So they know that they can't look at this. The only thing they can say is refraction, right? Those mountains are ma magically <clears throat> arising up 40 miles and stopping at your eye level. They don't go higher. They stop at your eye level to trick you into thinking the earth is flat. Okay. Yeah. So stupid. stupid. Here's an email for you from Patrick. Great name. So where does Dave, thanks for having him on, by the way. Where does Dave think NASA's $26 billion a year budget goes? Well, it's $80, any... $80 million a day goes to <laughs> NASA. I don't think NASA gets it. I think it's just black budgets, black projects, underground, uh, you know, cities Whatever. that they're building, all sorts of stuff, right? I mean, you know, where did the the two hundred billion that we sent Ukraine? Where did that go? Besides yeah. Biden's pocket, okay. I understand. Yeah. yeah. Because you can't audit these places. They they can do anything with those twenty six billion, right? You can, right. Anything. Right. And and money is all a scam anyway. I mean, who's who's auditing the Federal Reserve? Nobody. Um, and they're the ones that make the money. So you know, I was taught that every day at the end of the day, a bank has to look at its receipts, deposits, and, and withdrawals, and it has to, you know, new, it has to match out. No, it doesn't. No one's checking, right? Federal Reserve can go, hold on, $1 trillion. Okay, there's $1 trillion. Who's, who's adding? Where did it come from? Nobody knows. It came from thin air is where it came from, right? And uh, they're, they're, they do this with trillions of dollars, trillions. Patrick, you know how, big, how much a trillion is, right? Like a thousand million no it's a thousand billion a, it's thousand. a thousand billion but do you know how big that number is right do, do you know how long one trillion seconds is no take a guess one trillion seconds wow Second. one trillion seconds if you guess it within a week i'll i'll, I'll fly you to vegas for flattoberfest october 21st and 22nd and get you a, a, a king suite okay okay well, i'll guess uh 50 years yeah, very close. 31,000 really? years. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> One now let that sink in. One trillion seconds is 31,000 years. And we're in $70 trillion of debt and a trillion here and a trillion there, right? Then, then uh, on 9-10-2020 uh, and 2001, uh, yeah. Rumsfeld announced we lost two point three trillion dollars misplaced okay yeah. right misplaced if you paid a, a played two dollars every second it would take thirty one thousand years just to get to two trillion all right i can still find that video where he said that there was a day before 9 11 22 years ago yeah right? but unfortunately just, the budget office got blown up and uh you know and then the rest of the records were in building seven and you know all the enron stuff was in seven there was all kinds of stuff in seven yeah. God.
what you know <laughs> but still we gotta find a way that's uh you know that's why i thought this airline thing would work because we got to have a way that's dead solid perfect that nobody can argue there's got to well, be a way here's the thing nobody can argue much of the stuff that we have for example let your and here's the problem the problem is that um <laughs> that people's minds were not taught to think okay here's an airplane flying okay from cleveland a cali to cleveland okay right there's 500 miles of curvature. Do you see it? Because it's coming. It's coming. I think it's coming soon. Yeah, there should be count. 500 miles of curvature. What are we flying over? Okay. Now, some people go, well, you know, you don't notice the curve. It's going slowly and gravity is making you think that you're level. Okay. So. Cali is in India? Is that in India? No, that's ca California. Oh, I'm sorry. California Cal to Cleveland. Cal California to Cleveland. Okay. But here's a better one. Here's a better one, okay? So let me ask a question. Come back, uh, come back so I can see your face. Okay. So you're on an airplane. Yes. Okay? You're on an airplane. I'm on an airplane. You're on an airplane. Hold on. Hold on. Go back here. All right. You're on an airplane. Here you are. And you're sitting on the runway, and you're the pilot, and you're looking out. You see these stars over here? Mm -hmm. They're right in front of you, right in front of you, okay? And then you start flying over the ball. You're flying yeah. down to South America. Now, are those stars in front of you anymore? Nope. They're above you. So when you're flying, as you're going over, those stars should be processing upwards. As you go over, they should go. The stars that were in front of you when you're halfway down the ball should now be over you. Was it, yeah. you with me? Okay. So, yeah. so let's watch this. Let's watch this. Um, so here is a flight, a, a pilot filmed this, and we're watching these stars. Yeah. And he's going from Berlin to, to Brazil, right? 4,000 miles. These stars should be tracking upwards. Reality. This is reality. Now, if we put it in a Google Earth simulator, said, hey, fly, give me a flight from here and show the stars at night. This is what they show the stars doing. They show the stars going up. This is what Google Earth said should happen. This is what logic would tell you has to happen. Okay, you're going above on this earth. Yeah, you're just I mean, going straight here. And look, these stars are actually going down a little bit. They, when they, they shift, that's because the pilot just turned a little bit. Okay, the stars aren't going up. Okay, now the Globers come out and say, "Well, that's because you know you got a star here, and the Earth is turning right. So you're just kind of staying still as the Earth is turning, and the stars don't don't move." Okay, that's interesting argument. The problem is, planes only go 500 miles an hour. You'd have to be going, it's spinning to the, you'd have to be going west at a thousand miles an hour to make the stars not rise. But here's the problem. He wasn't going west. He was going south, right? Then they filmed it in the opposite direction. So let's just say somehow the plane in one direction could make the stars look like they're staying still and not rising. That means in the other direction, it'd have to move twice as fast because you're going against the spin. So they would, they would rotate up twice as fast. They don't rotate in either direction, right? Logic and Google Earth tell you that they should, but they don't rise up. They just stay. If anything, they're going down a little bit, okay? Yeah. Okay. So that's undeniable proof. Problem is most, most people's brains don't work in 3D like that, and they're unable. They've literally been fluoridated uh, to the point where they, and, you know, and vaccinated to the point where they can't think. They just can't think. Yeah, yeah they I just understand. can't think. They just can't think. Okay. So that, along with um, the gyro compass idea, easily provable. Just need a plane, a film crew, and a couple hundred dollars worth of equipment. Okay, piece of cake. Oh, so so you're talking, you're talking, you wouldn't go all the way down. You would just go down as far as you could. Just go anywhere off. south of the equator. Farther, the better. So go. To, let's go Brazil. Brazil is a fun place. We'll go there, <laughs> hang at the beach for a couple of days, you know, talk about the trip, you know, do a little surfing. And then we get on the plane. Couple hours on the airplane yep. is what you need, and uh, and you could actually perfectly document that north that, that west will peel off to the north when it needs to peel off to the south on a globe. And you could do this with a film crew and prove it. One hundred percent. There's no doubt. The problem is getting people's minds to understand that north and east on a globe and on a flat Earth 
need to follow, say, equidistant from the southern, uh, from the from the pole, right? <laughs> like if you were one mile from the North Pole, you had a rope and you're holding, it's tied to the North Pole and you're holding it, it's one mile. I want to go west. I have to stay equidistant from that pole. So I hold onto the rope and I start walking. I have to keep turning to the right. 6.28 miles later, I'm right back to where I started from. Okay. I went and I went west the whole time, right around. Make it bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, right? Now, think of that. You get all the way to the equator. You no longer have to turn because you're going right around the equator. But when you get south, you now have to stay equidistant to the south pole on a globe. And that doesn't happen. You still have to correct to the north. That proves it. You know, I think that, you know, uh, from a documentary perspective and a story perspe perspective, I think you could pull this off if you really had some scientists on board and they were all different, you know, nationalities and whatever. Well, you'd, you'd, and you'd, have to get, you'd have to get like retired college professors. You'd have to get uh, engineering students. You have to get people that don't, aren't supported by grants and everything because anyone that's involved in this is going to lose their income. So you could, you could get to the point where you could explain to the viewers that uh, what you just said has got to be true if we're on a globe, right? And 100%, you could, you could 100%. We can, we can yeah. explain cool. it better than I'm that'd, doing on this show. 100%. Yeah. That'd be pretty cool. That'd yeah. Pretty cool. And then another, another one we have is um, it's the string. We have an idea where you find a, a lake or a, a canal or whatever. And, you know, you know, the, the you know, the, the, when you, you say that, um, you know, Robotham on his uh, canal thing where you can see the, the flag, you know, should have gone down and it doesn't, you can see they could scream refraction, but I'm talking a physical test where we get a neutrally buoyant um, line, right? <clears throat> and you stretch it across a three mile lake. Okay. And three miles is, uh, is what's that, six feet? There should be, you, if you pull it across the surface of the lake, the center should be three feet below the surface. It's got to be if there's a curve. Would, right? if, if there's a curve, but there won't be. There won't be. Yeah. I'm, now, the, the, you have to get a, you, you can't string it above the water because no matter how tight you pull it, there'll always be a sag. Even if you did it with the thinnest, lightest thread, it will always sag and it'll break before it doesn't sag. But if you do it with a neutrally buoyant, right, um, line, like uh, I know exactly what kind of line, um, you can pull that and it would have to go down three feet in the center, but it won't. It'll go, I, I say you can put it a millimeter under the surface, it'll stay a millimeter under the surface all the way across. Well, Dave Weiss, I, I'm sure you've seen the, the video, what was it, from Brazil? And they, they were down there and doing long stretches, and they were using GPS and lights and sound and in rays or whatever they call it, and they they absolutely proved there was no there was no drop. Didn't you see that video? You've seen it. Huh? I, I must I must. I'm not sure which one you're talking about, but there there's a okay. whole bunch. You know, on on my app again to be found at flatearthdave.com. If you go to the web button and you scroll down to um, experiments right here. Um, and uh, I think it's the, oh, you know what? It's actually going to be featured on the app later this week. There's one where they, on a frozen lake, and I read it, it's already out. It's actually one of, one of it's, in, it's in one of these videos, but he got um, different colored lights and put them at different mile markers on a frozen lake, okay? And, um, and then he put a camera um, a, a foot above the water, a, a, foot, a foot above the ice, and it look at nighttime. And each one of these, uh, la uh, la I guess there were lasers or just lights. I'm not sure. I think there were lasers. You could see all of them, and they were all on the same plane, right? How do you have something that should be 20 or 30 feet below a curve on the same plane as the one that should only be three feet below the curve? And the, the other ones in the middle, they all line up perfectly. These are absolute undeniable proofs, undeniable, but people I'm still sure. want to just like, I need to hold on to my ball. I'm not, you know, it, it's amazing the mind control that, uh, that has been thrown over humanity and people will fight to protect it because that's what they've been programmed to do. But they don't understand that the lie is how we're in such slavery. We're all slaves. I mean, the whole abolishment of slavery and uh, whenever they did that, 
pro pro proclamation. A proclamation is just like a proclamation. It's not a law. They basically just made us all corporate slaves, right? All of us, you know, um, we, we, we think we're free American citizens and we act, when we're actually just um, property of the United States of America Corporation. That's correct. Yes, sir. I hear you're right on there. Um, this one radio network.com with uh, Dave Weiss, Flat Earth Dave. And you go to Flat Earth Dave and get this app thing. How many, how many Flat Earthers, if we wanted to do a crowdfunding thing to do a real kick ass uh, high end video documentary, how many think people could we, I mean, how many people out there do you think are Flat Earthers? Any idea? Well, there's there's more and more on my on my app the on the friend finder alone we we just hit a hundred and fourteen thousand people that are on my app. Okay. Wow. One hundred fourteen thousand on your app alone. One hundred fourteen thousand on the friend finder. That's not even you know if you look here, this is the east coast of, of the United States. You can't even see it anymore, right? These are all people that are on the friend finder. Okay. And here is uh, the UK. Right, people everywhere. We even have people in Antarctica. Okay, no kidding. Yeah, so you could raise the money for a good project, a really good project. You oh, there, the there, there's, there's already some great projects. So if you if you go um, on the app or on my website flatearthdave.com, go down to the crash course, um, and if you go down to flat earth full length videos right here, this one. Life movies. There's some great ones on here, especially the the level series, level level with me, and the next level. Okay. Yeah. I They're all, and not just because I'm in two of them. They're great, well put together. Right. If you're on the fence, if you think flat Earth is stupid, I challenge anybody watch two, three, or four of these videos. Turn off Netflix for a week, forever, and uh, and watch these videos, and then you too um, can be rejected by your family and friends. Well, I agree with you that people have lost their ability to critical thinkers. And that's what I'm thinking. We could come up with something really simple, really direct, really like it's something that couldn't happen on a globe earth, you know, even with all these great videos. And I've seen the level. They're good. I just want, I'm looking for something simpler, but okay. I mean, you can't have, you can't build a hundred mile canal with zero curvature. Okay. I, you know. A hundred mile canal with zero curvature. There should be over a mile of curvature. <laughs> so much evidence. You know, one thing that has kind of concerned me, not concerned, but I, I've been thinking about it, is if um, with the technology, Dave Weiss, do you think there would ever be a time where they could prove that their computer generated thing of Earth, which is all it is, is a real photo? You think they could trick us? I mean, they're trying, but their their photos of Earth are are absolutely atrocious. They're they're horrible, right? You know, and they 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 programmed us from 1927. Uh, Universal had a perfect layout of the globe before anyone ever went to space, and then 1972. Hey, it matches. <laughs> Go figure. <laughs> okay, Go figure. That's amazing. That's just so amazing. <clears throat> you know how they um. They tell us that um, this is the map of the world and that the sizes are wrong, right? That the dark ones, dark sizes are the actual sizes, right? And, the, and this is, but the map shows them, you know, it, Greenland is, it shows a green giant, but it's really much smaller. Africa is much bigger, right? But if you take all of these, they all fit on the flat earth map. They're all pretty much match what's on the flat earth map. Pretty crazy. Pretty crazy. I have a friend of mine who's a pilot. He was a pilot for like 30 years, Eastern or something. Yeah. Good guy. But, you know, he just thinks I'm crazy. And I, every time I ask him, I said, well, did you, did you, as you're going across, he would go to Hawaii. Did you actually um, adjust for this curvature, you know, so you could stay level? And he said, no, no, the plane just does that. Yeah. They, they claim that it's the air pressure and you know, they claim all sorts of things, but uh it's crazy. You know, the SR-71 Blackbird, um, that plane, that plane, mm -hmm. that's a, the, the spy plane, okay? Oh, the spy, okay. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. the, the, the SR-71 Blackbird, the spy plane, um, it, it travels at, um, 
How fast does it go? Um, there it is. Pretty yeah. fast. It, it travels at like tw to over 2,000 miles an hour, right? It would have to drop down, right? 9.5 miles a minute, okay? Just to follow the curve, okay? 9.5 miles a minute. That's like 80 floors a second, right? 80 floors of a building every second. Wow. Right? Just to follow the curve. And this guy goes at 2,000 miles an hour, Dave? Over. 2, yeah. Um, I, I don't see the exact speed. 2,200 miles per hour. Yeah. Could we, could we talk to that pilot? And he would say, well, I don't. There actually is a, there is a video of a pilot talking about, he goes, and he was showing a video of them flying and, uh, you know, looking out the window. He goes, here we are over uh, California. We could see the Sierra Nevadas. We could see this. And all the places that he mentioned should have been 50, 100 miles over the curve. But he's seeing these things from the, you know, from the height that he was using the globe earth calculator, curve calculator, the places that he said he could see should not be visible. I don't know how much more proof people need. Okay. Yeah, I understand. It's just, it's, well, the evidence is there. I say things fall into three baskets. Fall works on a globe earth. Nothing ever goes into that basket. Works on a globe earth and a flat earth. Hey, a lot of things go into there. Works only on a flat earth. Hey, a lot of things go in there. Nothing ever goes into basket one. Nothing ever. How many, how long do we have to go with an empty basket before people say, okay, we don't need that basket anymore because it's not a possibility. They just don't want to believe it. They just don't want to believe it. It's a religion. They don't want it, to change. The uh, heliocentrism is a cult. It's a, it's a very strong and it's very satanic. Very satanic, right? You ever look at uh, some of the symbolism, right? Space Force, Donald Trump's hat. Show us. Donald Trump's hat. Flip it over. It's even got the star. Oh. <coughs> oh. It's even got the star, right? Right. And then, and then we look at, um, what is this? Oh yeah. So they, they do all these cute little things. This is on the ISS. Right. And they, yeah. and they, they were like, Hey, we got our football jersey. Well, first you got the Ram. Okay. I, I didn't even notice that. But then I think when they do the flip, is this the one where they do the flip? They do a flip. Is this yeah. where the flip comes in? Hold on. Um, and he, oh yeah. He flips it. over and, uh, it, the six, 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 Right, because if you take the numerology of that, it, they they love their six six sixes, and then there's another one where they do a they did a flip, right? <laughs> They're always doing the six 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 hand signal, right? Um, where's the other one? Oh, they they it's show us the, the eclipse with the you know these are the umbra and the penumbra. It's the sigil of Satan. Okay, I don't know. Just maybe that's just a coincidence. Okay, it's just it's a coincidence. coincidence, right? And then here's one, you know. This is, uh, this is some other satanic uh, symbol. Uh, kind of looks like the ISS, if you ask me, but you know, maybe I'm wrong. Yeah. There. Right? And then, um, they, then uh, if you look at, I mean, I can't read all of these, but all of the numbers equal 666, right? It's all, it's all crazy, crazy numerology. Now, tell folks who are new to this how the uh, people controlling this and why the satanic thing is tied in with a globe model rather than a flat model. Explain that to them. Well, the, the, the whole thing, you know, and if you, ask, if you ask the motivation something, I don't know the motivation, but it's sure obviously clear to me. I can't prove it. But, um, you know, as I talked about before, it's about control. And the way they control you is um, they separate you from God, right? They separate, they put you, they don't want you in a situation where you can you have no choice but to admit there's a creator. Now, Big Bang, right? Big Bang, nothing exploded. A Jesuit priest made that up and it turned into balls and all the rocks turned into planets and all the gases collapsed upon themselves and turned into stars. The magic of gravity, it's just so insane. I, I, it's even hard to repeat, but you can believe that happened, Big Bang, or you can say, you know, God did that. Okay, you have your choice. So you lose faith, you go back and forth. But when you understand that we live in a, intelligently designed world you have no choice but to accept the fact that there's a creator and if everybody knew that the earth was flat then everybody would know that there's a creator and everything changes because when you have no choice but to understand that you're at the center of creation 
um, ev everything changes, everything, everything changes. So they don't want you in that situation. And then the whole, you know, the, the people that are running this world are Satanists, whether you believe in that or not, it, it's clearly obvious if you look at what's going on and um, they use numerology and spells and, and all sorts of stuff uh, to, to control human minds. But the way they get away with it is people don't even believe that that's a thing. And they give away their God-given free will willingly um, because they've been programmed not to think. They've been poisoned, so they're unable to think. And how, Patrick, how do we uh, break out of it? I don't know. You know, the, the diameter of the moon is six times six times 60 miles, right? All right. The sun diameter, um, the, the sunset is uh, divided is by, by three degrees equals six plus six plus six. Um, there's just, it's, it's, there's so, there's actually a list of like 50 things. It's crazy. Right. The, the tilt of the earth is 66.6 .6 degrees, right? The tropics are 66.6 .6 degrees off of 90, off of, uh, off of zero. Um, it goes on and on. The earth orbits the sun at 66,600 miles per hour. Right. Circumference of the earth is 600 times six times six nautical miles. The speed of sound is 66, 666 knots per second, right? Well, how, how many coincidences, coincidences I mean, do, you, do you need? You know, so Dave Weiss, that's the, that's the part that gets me more than anything, is that I just don't like people to think I'm stupid. You know, I just don't, you know what I'm saying? That they right. just treat us like we're, we're children, and we're going to do this and just shove it in their face. That's the part that gets me, you know? Right. I Patrick, really so, Patrick, let me ask you a question. Yeah. Gas, air, any gas, what does it do when released? It fills the available space violently, okay? Mm -hmm. If you have a, a vacuum tank and you open it up, whoosh, air is going to fill that space violently, instantly. Air, mm -hmm. uh, gases always fill, expand to fill the available space instantly and violently, okay? But in the Big Bang, some reason in space, when you have a lot of gas in an infinite space, it decides to fall in and collapse upon itself and create suns. Okay? So our sun, a very small star, is made up of gases that decided, hey, you know what? Enough of this filling the available space. We're all going to come together and become this ridiculously uncomprehensible large ball of gas, right? And ignite and... Uh, we're going to burn, I think it's like 600, 6 billion tons a day or a minute or a second of fuel. But over billions of years, our mass will never change. Even though it's, it's burning, I think it's, I, gotta, I forget the number, but it's so ridiculous. It's like 60 billion tons a minute. Okay? But for some reason, over billions of years, the mass of the sun hasn't changed. The gravity, the magic gravity that holds onto all the planets ignores all the moons. And everything just perfectly rotates and lines up to make perfect, a perfect clock that never changes in millennia after millennia. Okay. If you believe that, you're successfully completely brain rost to the point of, I can't even say the word, <laughs> you're in retardation. Okay. Your brain has been retarded, slowed down. Uh, the other night, uh, my golden doodle here woke me up at two o'clock in the morning and cause somehow the doggy door was closed and she needed to be. So I walked outside and it was dead solid, just quiet, right? Bright moon that you'd almost read by. And even if I had never heard any of this, you absolutely know just standing there looking at that moon, that the sun is not shining on that moon, causing that light. You know it. I mean, come on. You just know it. I don't care what they say. And then you also know that you're not moving. You just stand there, close your eyes. You're not moving. We're just not moving. These people do not want you to think that what you are experiencing is true. They don't want you to think that you are that smart or that aware or something. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. The, the moonlight, they want you to believe that a dusty, dirty ball can reflect um, reflect light like that. Hold on, let me let me pull up this okay. light. I think that's the He's one. got somebody good here. Yeah. 
So, so, so or email. Go ahead. This is this is the moon reflecting sunlight. Are you kidding me? Right. But on you know on when the men were on the moon, it wasn't. This is during the day. How can it be uh, this dim here and then a quarter of a million miles away? It looks that bright, right? It, it, it's absolute insanity. And if you look, you know, a ball would have a hot spot. But when we look at the moon, there's no hot spot. There's no where if the sun is reflecting, it should be a hot spot right in the middle. If we're looking at a full moon, but um, it's not. The moon is its own light. What's your what's your best theory on what the moon is? Do we think it's plasma? Do you have any idea? I think that the moon that we, I, there might be a physical moon up there, but uh, the moon that we see is just a, um, it's a projection for lack of a better word. It's just a non-physical light in the sky, like a focus point of energy. I don't, I don't know what the moon is. And uh, um, I don't think anybody does. I, the moon is tied it. to, you know, to the, to the site, you know, to the birthing cycle, right? The women's, a women's sure. menstrual cycle is the same as the moon's. That's no coincidence. There's, there's 13, yeah. there should be 13 moons a year and then one day to reset the year. 13 times 28, you know, the moon, 13 moon cycles plus one day equals 365 days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, we know that the sun and the moon circle around this flat, immovable plane, right? Yeah. And they go like this. And they change their circular um how big it is, and that causes the seasons. Do, do we know our theories of why, what's what's moving these things around? They'd almost have to be living and doing it on their own, wouldn't they? What would be moving them around the Earth? Well, I think that they're energetic. They're, we're not moving giant balls of gas or rocks yeah. in the sky. Um, I think that, you know, there is an energy up there, a, a source energy. We live in this electrical system. Uh, we're electrical yes, beings in this in this amazing, uh, divinely created system. So, yes. so you know, when the moon go, when the sun goes out to the Tropic of Capricorn, it's far away from us here in the north, so it's lower in the sky. You know, when it goes far away, it's low and it's cold because it's far, right? Mm. They tell us during our summer the sun is farther away than it is during our winter. Opposite, they've inverted everything. Seasons actually prove the Earth is flat. If you go on the, the, the question mark page and you go to the seasons button, there's a whole bunch of videos in there that Google's hiding from you. And, um, and how, do you see, how do seasons prove it? Just well, because so so here I'll come back to, I'll come back to the screen. Where, where okay. Um, so think of this uh, example. On a globe, they tell us we're closer to the sun in the summer, but that doesn't matter. It's because we're tilted towards the sun, right? Right. right. That's what they tell us, right? So here's America. Here's America. And we got the sun here. And when we're tilted towards, there's more direct rays, and that's why it's hotter. Cool. Cool story. Okay? Cool story. The problem is, what about when we rotate? We're now at a very sharp angle to the sun. So it should be freezing at sunset in June at sunrise should be the coldest day of the year because the sun is three and a half million miles farther away and it couldn't be any more. We couldn't be any more tilted away at sunrise. But in June here in Connecticut, I go out on the water. The sun shows up on the horizon. I can feel the heat immediately on my face. I'm, it's warm. But then in December, when it's three and a half million miles closer, Globers will tell you that doesn't matter. At noon, when the sun is like, say 50 degrees up in the sky, 50 degrees off the horizon, I could look up at the sun and not even feel the heat. Closer and more direct. So <clears throat> let's do a little flat earth example. You and I are here and um, in the middle of the winter. Um, where are you located, Patrick? Uh, yes, Texas, Dripping Springs, Texas. Texas, all right. Well, forget Texas. You come to Connecticut in February, it's freezing. <laughs> and you and I are sitting outside in a big on a football field and we're 20 feet apart because we don't want to infect each other with the new variants, okay? And we're trying to drink our beers, but it's freezing, okay? And our beers are freezing, right? And then somebody comes over with a 15-foot pole with a big, giant heat lamp and holds it 15 feet over your head. And so now you look, oh, that feels really good. And the snow around you melts and your beer gets melted and you can take off your coat. And I'm 20 feet away. 
And I look at that. I say, Patrick, are you warm? You're like, yeah, I, well, I'm still freezing. I could barely feel that heat over here. And you're like, well, it's right above me. And I'm like, well, it's not above me. It's over there. It's lower in the sky, but it's really still 15 feet off the ground. But I see it lower in the sky and it's farther away. Now that person walks over to me, not lowering it at all, keeping it 15 feet up. And I'll watch that sun get higher and higher and higher and higher. But it's still at 15 feet. Now it's directly over me, closer. I'm warm. You're cold. It's lower for you, higher for me. That's how seasons work. If you could understand that they talk about you got the axis, you got the you got the you got the axis of the earth. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Tilted. Well, guess what? You can tilt the ball this way. You can tilt it this way. You can tilt it any way. It's the relationship of the landmass to the sun. So if I, if I have a, a sun over here, so I got United States pointing directly at the sun. If I tilt it away, it's now not pointed towards the sun. It's, it's away. So that's winter. But what about if I just rotate it away? That's the same thing. It's the same exact thing. That should cause freezing cold temperatures in the heliocentric model, but it doesn't. You don't. You do not. Yeah. Um, uh, let me do this one. Why? Here's an email from Greg. Why didn't people with telescopes or high end cameras film the India lander live when it went to the moon? Yeah, because they went. Mm -hmm. to, they, 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 because they know that we have great optics now, they went to the south pole of the moon, which doesn't face the earth. Okay. Tricky, huh? Tricky. That's what they're playing. Actually, here, think of, look at this. This is a Jedi mind trick. So they show the landing. They show this stupid thing, right? They show. But, but they, you would admit this was a cartoon, a CGI, don't oh, they? I totally agree. That, no, well, but they don't tell you that. They don't tell you that. So I'm, I'm going to show you the Jedi trick, right? And I called it from the beginning, okay? So they show you this crappy um, 1970s Atari um, graphic. And everyone claps. Everyone's like, oh, my God. You know, and they show this horrible graphic. Now, they don't say it's a, it's a cartoon because it's off it's a cartoon. But they don't show you any other evidence other than this. Right. So they're showing you this. Now, here's my question, Patrick. If it crashed, did they have an animation? If it crashed, like supposedly they're just getting the data. They're just getting the data and they're showing it in a cartoon. And all of these people, what are they watching? Are they watching a cartoon also? Or they're, they're looking at all the data. They're looking at all the data, the tel telemetry data. OK, so let's they're looking at the telemetry data. So you know this is fake. Now, all the flat earthers, they made a ton of memes and videos laughing and laughing. And the Globers wait a few days, and then they come out and they go, you stupid flat earthers. Nobody thought that was real. Nobody thought that was real, right? And they, and they call us stupid flat earthers for thinking that that was supposed to be real, okay? Then a day later, or later in that day, whatever it was, they show this, the rover, or I'll just call it the briefcase on wheels, right? Going down. Now, this is a video, okay? This is a video. So now in your mind, like that was fake this is real okay fake animation real video so your mind has just said this is real that was fake so now they're showing you real footage from the moon or is this from a studio i could film this in my backyard okay this is this is ridiculous uh, did you ever you ever go uh, like to hawaii or anything you ever go anywhere nice when you get when yeah, you get hawaii. a picture of the ground and send it to everybody or do you take a picture of like, hey, here's the landscape, okay? Well, this is the camera that's on the thing. It, does, it can't, there's nobody on it. It can only point down, right? How about show us the stars, show us the earth, show us something, okay? Now people think that was fake, this is real. Therefore they're on the moon. This is fake, that was fake, it's all fake, right? Then they go, well, you know, uh, amateur astronomers and these guys that for their entire career, amateur career, is just clapping and cheerleading for everything NASA. Like, well, I've got this video stream and I was able to intercept the telemetry data. Do you think that they can't fake telemetry data? Well, the data was coming from this direction. How do you know it's coming from that direction? And how do you know it's not coming from a balloon that's between us and the moon? 
that's just sending you telemetry data, right? It's like the things that people use as evidence are ridiculous. None of it would hold up in a court of law or even in a playroom of a five-year-old, okay? It's, it's the dumbest stuff ever. But these people, there's people out there that are so lost in space, they will sit up and down swear that this is real because, you know, here, here, here's, um, did you know that a couple days prior, um, the, the, the Russians tried to land on the moon and it crashed? Are you aware of that? Yeah, I, 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 heard, I saw the story. Yeah, I saw the story. Here's the crash crater, okay? And the way that they know that the crash crater is here it is before and here it is after. So they got two pictures of the moon. Somehow they got two amazing pictures of the moon that are exactly from the same spot. And one of them's before and one of them's after. Patrick, is this <laughs> proof of anything? <laughs> proof of anything, right? And, and they'll go, you know, this liar gave me a picture and then the liar gave me another picture and they were different, showing that, that it's real, okay? You know, Patrick, if, if somebody, if, if you, let's say somebody came in and robbed your house and ran out and, you know, and, and got away and you're like, that guy robbed my house. And I went, I saw where he went. I went to his house. I knocked on his door and go, did you just rob Patrick's house? And he goes, no. Are you sure? No, I didn't. Okay. Patrick, you're wrong. He said he didn't do it. Okay. <laughs> How dumb these guys are. There's something can you, can you, Patrick said that are so lost in space that they can't see. They can't see, and, they, and all they do is they watch Flat Earth videos all day long, and they make up crap um, to, to try to debunk it. It's the saddest thing ever. It's so sad. Can you show me the picture of the Prime Minister of India and the flag again? Um, um, oh, my God. This, this, I was thinking, there, that one, now, like I, if I was going to... I don't know. He might be fooled. Uh, he might oh, he probably, yeah, he probably, is. but the thing is, if I was going to do a spoof on this thing, this is what you would do. You get a guy like this with a little flag and do a film, you know, and say how, you know, you know what I mean? It's like, it's just unbelievable. Uh, this one radio network.com. I'm going to stay for a few more minutes. Um, <laughs> Crazy. I just got a thing from our, from our, oh, look at, I have, I've got you as Fat Earth, Fat Earth Dave. F-A-T-R-D. Fat Earth. <laughs> Fat Earth. <laughs> I'll change it, right? I'll change it. I didn't, somebody just wrote in and said, we got Flat Earth Dave. It's hilarious. We got it. We fixed it. So here's the thing that, that I've always marveled at, Dave, before we go, um, is that it is proven by NASA and everybody and their brother, that the stars circle around, right? Circle around Earth, don't they? They, at September 11, 2023, the stars, be, they circle entirely around, correct? And they come back at the same spot, true? They do. Once a year. They circle around they every do. day. Every day. I'm sorry. Oh, they circle around every day? Every day. Well, I thought it took them a year to go all the way around. No, 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 no. So, so sure. let me, I'll pull up my screen. Okay. See, I was confused, but I stay confused. Okay. So, so here is, let me make it, make it bigger. Hold on a second. All right. Okay. The sun goes around once a day. Okay. Wherever the sun is, it's noon. So, like, I could wait. And if I knew somebody at, is at, where is that, Tahiti or whatever, I'll call them and say, where's the sun? They go, it's directly above me. And uh, it's noon. Wherever the sun is, it's noon. It works perfectly, right? And so if I speed it up, you'll see that it's catching up to the moon and the moon's getting smaller and smaller. And we got to let it go around a couple more times and then it'll leave the moon behind. So the sun goes around once a day, keeping track of the hours and the days. So here comes the moon again. If you look, it's falling out behind. It laps the moon every 28 days, 28, 29 days, right? Oh my God. Lunar. So the moon keeps track of the weeks and the moons. There should be 13 moons. 
but they have a calendar also, right? And now I got to slow it down and I'll put on the stars. The stars circle around at almost the same speed as the sun, but they're mm -hmm. actually a little bit faster and the stars will lap the sun like the moon laps, the sun laps the moon every 20, 28 days. Um, the stars lap the sun every 365 days. So people say that the moon is going in the other direction. No, the sun, the sun's just getting a little farther away. Like people running around a racetrack. You and I are running around a racetrack. I'm going a little bit faster than you. Each time around, you're going to be a little bit farther behind me. You're the moon. I'm the sun, right? And then there's a whole bunch of other people that are on the track that all spread out. They're the stars and they're running just a little bit faster than me. So I slowly drift back in them. So the sun will drift back through each zodiac, one per month, approximately. Okay. And um, it'll, what is, why is it jumping like that? What's going on there? Weird. Mm -hmm. um, weird. See if it does that again. Um, so the sun will slowly drift back for about a month in each zodiac. Okay, so the stars go around once every day, minus four minutes. And after 365 times, we're right back to where we started from. Next year, same day, same time, we'll be in the exact same star system. Same. So there's no way that could happen if we on Earth are a ball spinning around the sun in the Milky Way and the solar. It just couldn't happen. How, how, how could the stars stay with us? So if you look at Polaris, which is right off the handle of the Big Dipper, right? It's in the same spot every day, all day, all year, every day, forever. But we're traveling 4.4 billion miles a year, never to return to where we were before. But for some reason, the star never moves. Now, the Globers, right, the PhD uh, Globies will be out there and say, well, it's so far away. There's no parallax. Even after millennia, after millennia, after millennia, there's no parallax. But, but in reality, you know, 2,000 years ago, it wasn't our North Star. We had a different one called Thuban. Okay? So we had a star called Thuban. It slowly processes out. So there's millennia of no North Star, but we happen to live in the time where Polaris is right there. Okay? And it doesn't move. Bull crap. Bull crap. Okay? It, it's absolutely insanity and there's monuments all over the earth like the the um the 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 great pyramid has a shaft that points towards polaris but the they'll claim oh well that's not true that that it used to be um it used to be uh pointing towards thuban right so well guess what remember the georgia guidestones georgia guidestones had a hole that pointed towards polaris right right so Every, they say in the heliocentric model that we're processing um, a degree every 72 years, okay? Well, a degree is a huge swath of the sky, okay? And a half a degree would put Polaris way out of this hole, okay? A half a degree is like one and a half moon widths or two moon widths, okay? It would be out of the hole. You look at the hole, all you can see is Polaris. All year, every day, every night, all year, Right? So after 40 years of these being up, ah, amazingly, some terrorist supposedly blew it up. And now we can't, we, you know, because it was up for 40 years. That's more than a half a degree. Um, bam, it's blown up and everyone's forgotten about it. And then somehow, you know, this, this crazy thing happens. And within hours, they had a wrecking crew there to knock the whole thing down. No investigation, no nothing, no nothing, right? None of that works in a heliocentric model. None of it. Right? Oh, are they going to protect this until the cows come home, aren't they, Dave Wise? Flat Earth with our stars up here, right? This is what we have our circling stars. This is the corkscrewing. This is what the stars would look like. Okay? Star pass would look like that. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. <laughs> How do you do this for all these years and get, not get to the point where it's so absurd that you just want to throw up your hands and say, nobody's going to ever believe it? So absurd. It's a memorial. I forget where this was. It's a war memorial, not that I'm a fan or anything. But on 11 mm -hmm. and at 11, 11 a.m., so November 11th at 11, 11 a.m., 
the sun lines up with all of these holes and lights up this emblem on the ground. Okay. How's that possible? What's that? Going through space. Is it possible? What's that? Wouldn't be possible. It couldn't be possible. Yeah. And every year, like clockwork, perfectly, never changing. What about when we have all these planetary alignments? How come they don't tug on each other? Right. If the sun's gravity, the gas ball sun that somehow collapsed in space, can hold on to Pluto and Neptune and Saturn and Jupiter, right? But it can't hold the, it, it's not pulling on the Earth, right? It, how come when we have an alignment, it doesn't tug on any of them, but somehow it doesn't, I mean, it doesn't tug on our moon. Our moon goes around, you know, ignoring the sun, it goes around our Earth towards the sun and away from the sun, towards the sun, and it never gets pulled or, or pushed or anything, right? Bull, bull, baloney. They tell us that Jupiter is, uh, has more gravity than the rest of the planets in our solar system. Fine. Jupiter is made out of hydrogen and helium, they also tell us. Hydrogen and helium defy gravity here on Earth. So tell me when hydrogen and ha helium create gravity and also collapse instead of fill the space violently. <laughs> How absurd. Here's the thing. It's so absurd, people can't wrap their minds around it. It's so absurd. I'm, I understand. No, I, I, I get it. Uh, from uh, Randy, does he think that NASA pays people to put out heliocentric films and whatnot? Oh, it, there's major funding for all that stuff, you know, from Ancient Aliens to the History Channel, uh, Nat Geo, they're out there, they're deceivers. The Mythbusters, um, they're all out there to protect the heliocentric line. Uh, mm, mm -hmm. All those different TV stations, uh, TV uh, networks and all that stuff. Yeah, over, over and over and over again. Yeah. So I wonder, has anybody from NASA ever addressed the idea that when rockets go up, they make a right-hand turn and just go somewhere in the Atlantic? I guess that's what we believe, right? Have they ever addressed that? I mean, do, do, does NASA say, well, what do they say? When people... what, what do they say? Yeah. Uh, they don't say anything. They, they, NASA, you know, if you ignore it, um, it doesn't matter. You know, it, 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 it doesn't matter. But they all, they all go out into, um, hold on, we go, go here. Here we go, bam. So here are the rockets. Yeah. Right, they go, they go, they turn. and they go right out. Okay, they go, they go, they go straight out into the Bermuda Triangle, right there, Bermuda Triangle, and that is double Bermuda Triangle. You know, and sometimes, like if somebody sneaks out there, one of two things happens: up, oh, there's a boat out there that they might be able to see something. Rocket launch is canceled because of weather, because of an O-ring, because of this, because of that. Other thing is, let's say someone sees what they're not supposed to see. They can say, well, that was just the first stage that you saw fall. But they're like, no, 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 it wasn't. Well, that boat disappears in the Bermuda Triangle, and everyone goes, well, they shouldn't have been out in the Bermuda Triangle. And that's it. It's totally, totally covered up. Totally. So these people, even, even Musk or, or Bezos or whoever, they're willing to shoot these things up in the air. I guess some of them are really shot up and not CGI and just dump them in the ocean as part of the deal. So this, this rocket's going up and they say it's going around the curve of the earth, but if we watch an airplane, which is nearly as high, it's going in a straight line and it looks like it's, it's just going down. It's like, how come that's not following the curve of the earth, right? And how much, how much higher or lower is this? We, it's, look, it just went through the clouds here, okay? It's so, it's so pathetically bad. Um, I don't know how, I don't know how people believe this stuff because they want to believe, right? Every kid wants to be an astronaut. They're grooming kids, okay? They, they, they want you worshiping their helio sinister trek. Here's one for you. Dave has, Dave, has science or anyone, to the best of your knowledge, ever been able to demonstrate liquid water collecting and forming that which we call a body thereof without requiring containment. What's he asking here? 
large bodies of water at rest lie flat. Now, people say water, you know, and grav without gravity will turn into a sphere. Well, a drop has surface tension. Yes. Okay. Um, on a zero G plane, you can play with, you know, like a cube, like a, like a square inch volume of water. Um, and if you're very careful, it'll kind of stay together, but it more so it'll probably fall apart. Nowhere ever has anyone taken a gallon of water and made it go into a sphere. Okay. Anything larger than a gallon of water or a cup of water at rest lay, lies flat. They want you to believe that if you have water in space, it'll all just turn into a ball. You can't have water in space. It'll boil. Dave Weiss and Flat Earth Dave is on the name of his website, flatearthdave.com. Okay, well, we're going to talk more, and, and I think you've given me lots of good information on a potential um, documentary where it wouldn't cost as much as I think that you could actually prove. Yep. Right? If you did it right with scientists, you know, backing up your, your telemetry before you've even done it, you know, I think you could do it. So I'll keep in touch with you on that. Hey. Dave, thanks a lot. It's always fun. You know, you're always just a blast to, to have on the air. If you want to learn more, all of the stuff is being hidden from you. I'll go to flatearthdave.com. You get my app. It's $3. Um, or just watch the free stuff on my website. Tons of stuff. If you Google Flat Earth, if you Google Flat Earth Dave, Dave Weiss, Flat Earth Curvature, Flat Earth Proust, you get the same videos every time, which are all the propaganda videos. They're embarrassingly horrible. But um, they want you stuck on those so you get tired, so you laugh at Flat Earth. Um, you'll never find anything worthwhile, but the app breaks the algorithm. Um, and check it out. I have a challenge. Watch every day. There's a new video right here. Just click it and watch that for two weeks. At the end of two weeks, if you can come up with one globe proof, you win three Bitcoins. Okay? But you got to watch Bitcoin. three weeks, two weeks, and you got to check the frequently asked questions before you send me your ridiculous question that's already been answered. How often do you get uh, computer generated images of the spinning earth surrounded by space saying, here's your proof? A lot, I guess. No, the, the, like the people are even smarter than that. A couple of people will say, NASA sent this picture, yo, pictures of earth. And I'm like, which picture? Like there's hundreds of them. I'm like, pick one and they'll never pick one. They'll never do it. I mean, just pick one that you're willing to stand behind and I will show you, I will show you how it's fake. Right. I mean, people like, well, what about the blue marble? Right. So if I just type in uh, Earth. Well, we know that one. I mean, even the guy who did it admitted it was a computer thing, didn't he? Right. The right. Blue marble guy. It is. Huh. And if you look, you know, there's that he's very lazy. Stepped and repeated the clouds. <laughs> Copy and paste. Him. Copy and paste. Right. Very lazy. Very lazy. And, uh, you know, it, I would. Oh, one do you like? Which one's your favorite? You know, I, I like the blue marble the best, actually. You know, it was on my first iPhone. Like, right? So you think with a lot of money, you could be a little bit more creative, you know. You, could, you, would, you would think so. Yeah. So, Dave, you take care of yourself, stay out of trouble, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Let us know if we can help with anything. All right. All right Patrick, thanks so much. And uh, don't believe the deceivers. Use your own mind. Use your own mind. All right, Brad. Thank you.